Welcome to the culture. We rest at the pulse of the community, providing all things news, music, fashion events, and everything that we talk about in between. It's a lifestyle. We are the culture. Thanks for tuning in. Today's show is brought to you by New Florida Majority. Sign up to vote from home. No lines, less contact, lower risk. Go to floridawill.vote to request your vote by mail ballot. Hi, I am your host, Jessica Garrett Modkins, and welcome to another edition of The Culture. Joining us this afternoon is Monet Holder, who is the Senior Program Director for the New Florida Majority. Welcome to the show, Monet. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Let's start off. We're in the midst of an election, and I know that your organization is one that is founded on advocating for black and brown people. Can you tell us a little bit a little bit more about the New Florida Majority? Sure. So New Florida Majority, we're an independent organization and we work to build voting and political power in black and brown communities across the state. So we have our headquarters, our main office based in Miami. We have another large office in Jacksonville, which is where I'm based. Um, and we have offices in Broward, Palm Beach, and Tallahassee. Um, so not only do we have a C3 and a C4. So we do a lot of issue-based advocacy, voter education, voter registration. And we also do some lobbying on policies that impact and affect um, communities of color. Um, and on our PAC side, we endorse candidates, candidates who we know or hope to be progressive champions um, during their term while they're elected. Um, but in addition to endorsing them, we also hold them accountable to make sure that they are pushing policies and initiatives that really uplift Black and brown communities across the state. So we do a lot. Yes, uh -oh. you do. <laughs> you do. And as um, the senior program director, how what part of what you all do do you oversee? So I oversee the policy, advocacy, and research of the organization. Um, my team includes um, issue-based work such as climate justice, criminal justice reform, and gender justice. Um, I also lead the organization overall in the fight for voting rights, um, both at the local, state, and national level, and I develop strategies to build Black political power in the state. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a little bit of what I do. <laughs> And speaking of which, you uh, actually orchestrated uh, a statewide initiative to empower and encourage Black voters throughout the state of Florida, right? Yes, absolutely. So it's our 20 for 20 campaign. Um, it's a, it's targeting Black voters. Um, really, we're trying to turn out 2 million Black voters in this election cycle. So it's a new Florida majority alongside Florida for All, which is a coalition of organizations across the state. Um, and we each have um, taken up constituencies that we know will make a huge impact in this election. And I run the Black constituency program. So we have been charging every single Black person in the state to bring 20 people with them to the polls. And they do that through social media, through text messaging, through engagement, making sure that at the bare minimum, they have 20 people that turn out with them. If we can do that, we can have 2 million, million people vote this election cycle. So that's what we're hoping for. Yeah, that sounds like a huge undertaking, but when you break it down the way that you did, it makes it palatable and something that I can see easily happening. And so to that point, today's Friday, we still have today, Saturday, Sunday, and then again on election day to grab those 20 people and encourage them to go to the polls or pull up with you and vote. I think that's a great initiative. How is it going so far? It's going well. Um, you know, we've been looking at the numbers and both with early voting going on as well as vote by mail. We're hopeful that we'll get the turnout that we need, um, but also just encouraging people during this time um, to make sure they show up, make sure they show up prepared. Um, if you requested a vote by mail ballot at this point, you need to turn it into an early voting location. There are secure drop boxes, mostly outside of early voting locations in which you can take that sign dated and sealed ballot and drop it in there and know that it will be counted. You also still have the option to vote in person during early voting or as you mentioned on election day. Want to make sure you bring photo ID with you. Want to make sure that the signature that you're using matches the signature that they have on file. You know, there are a lot of 
voter suppression tactics that are happening, both from people who are just trying to discourage voters, especially voters of color, trying to intimidate voters because they're leaning towards a specific candidate. But we must not be discouraged. We must not be disenfranchised. So I will reiterate again, if you have a vote by mail ballot, make sure you turn it into a drop box. If you're going to vote in person, get there early, give yourself a little bit of time in case there is a line. A line is a good thing. That means Mm -hmm. people are exercising, you know, their right to vote. So, um, it's crunch time. <laughs> yes, it is. And then I also heard some things about um, making a plan to vote and actually trying to fill in a sample ballot to assist you when you go actually into the ballot booth. What do you think about that? I think that's smart. Um, in addition to the presidential candidates being at the top of the ticket, we have down ballot races in many of our areas, people running for Congress. Um, in some places, like in Jacksonville, um, you have a special election for city council seats. So we want to make sure that we know who's running for what um, and what they can actually do for our community so we make an informed decision. So you should definitely get a sample ballot, do your research, take that sample ballot with you already completed. So if you haven't done a vote by mail ballot, you're in and out of a precinct because you know who you're going to vote for. If you're not sure where early voting location is or where your election day location is or how to access um, a sample ballot, you can go to newmajority.vote, put in your county and continue filling out the information and you can find everything that you need for, for voting during early voting or election day. And then you also mentioned this about voter suppression. I have um, heard people who have gone early to early vote and they've run into some problems and they actually left and just went to another polling site to avoid that confrontation um, that they were in the midst of. Um, What are some other suggestions if people feel as if their vote is being suppressed while they're there at the uh, polling station? So one effort that New Florida Majority and our partners with the Florida for All Coalition um, is doing is election protection. So it's nonpartisan volunteers at polling sites. They will have shirts on that says, I'm a voter protector. They may have on yellow jackets. And they're just helping you vote. If you have an issue with your polling location, if you're being told this isn't the right place for you on election day, they can help you look that up. If you have any questions about your ID, they can help you look that up as well. If you feel like you're being intimidated, they can help you kind of document those instances and either reach out to your local supervisor of elections or even get you in contact with an attorney. Um, If you, for some reason, do not see an election protection advocate, you can also dial 1-866-OUR-VOTE. And that's 1-866-OUR-VOTE and get directly connected with a lawyer who can help assist you on the spot, as well as document your instances. So that way we can try to figure out long-term how to avoid that happening to you or any other voter again. And uh, Monet, after the vote is all cast and it, we're, we wake up, it's November the 4th, um, what's next? What do you advise us to do? Because at the New Florida Majority, you are a 365-day organization. You don't just rally around elections and and endorse candidates and teach people the, the things that are going on that they need to be voting about. What's next and what should we uh, become actionable about? So I think one thing we all have to prepare ourselves for is that we may not automatically see finalize election results on election day. We have vote by mail ballots. We have provisional ballots. We have things that happen in different states. And Florida is Florida, right? (laughs) So we have to embrace and prepare ourselves that we may not know before we go to bed at night on election day who our next president of the United States will be. Or there may be some recounting of other seats up and down the ballot. So let's just be clear about that and prepare ourselves and not be discouraged. Um, But in addition to, it doesn't matter who gets elected, we still have to hold them accountable. And that work starts the day after election day. Um, We have a lot of things going on. Um, We just finished up our our, our 2020 census. Redistricting is something that will be happening. That is how those census data is tabulated, how we get representation in Congress. That's still an ongoing fight because we want to make sure that communities of color are represented and that redistricting and get the power that they need from the communities as well as the funding. So that's one thing. We have our legislative session happening in the first week of March here in Florida. That's when we get to hold those elected officials who we got into office during the 
August and November to the fire to really represent our communities and push policies that we need for change, especially during the time of a pandemic. So the work doesn't stop. You still have to advocate on a local, state, and federal level. We still have things like redistricting that's taking place. And we still have to make sure that our votes are counted properly so that way who deserves to be in office is actually serving. So that's all through advocacy. That's all through showing up. That's all through attending committee meetings, hearings, talking to people who are in power, talking to the media, letting them know that we're watching and we're holding them accountable. That's good. That's good. Now, let me ask you this. There may be people who have family members that they know haven't gone to the polls yet. Can you offer some words of advice on how they can help their sphere of influence or their friend or family member to understand how important that vote that they're not casting is? Yeah, I think it's just really reminding them what the, what's at stake in this election. This, as and we've heard people say it, and it may sound cliche, but this is the fight of our lives, right? We have been facing so many things over the last four years, but most importantly, this last year in 2020, with the lack of response of government to a global pandemic. So we've seen people lose their jobs. We've seen people lose their lives, their livelihood. Um, racism. We've seen Black men and women dying at the hands of police brutality and nothing being done, right? So this election will shape and make or break how this treatment of Black people continues. And for that reason alone, we must show up and we must vote. So if you can remind them that and give them a ride to the polls that they need it, I think they'll get there. (laughs) (laughs) I think that would do it. We said it all, but I reiterate, um, it's real simple. 20 for 20. We need 2 million Black folks to vote. If you could just bring 20 out, we can get there. Um, your vote is your voice and that's your power. So let's exercise our power. Let's turn out and let's bring at least 20 people with us. Thank you so much, Monet Holder with the New Florida Majority. We greatly appreciate you. And uh, to all of our viewers, thank you for joining us for another edition of The Culture. We'll see you tonight at 6 p.m., for another edition of My Two Cents. Thanks for joining us. The Culture is produced and owned by Hip Rock Star Media and cannot be reproduced or broadcast without written consent by Jessica Garrett-Motkins, All Rights Reserved 2020.